Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. And I'm going to show you how to make this pot holder with a mason jar applique pattern on it. It's a really basic pattern. I consider this a beginner's project. So let's get started. Now all you need for this pot holder is a couple of fat quarters. You're going to cut your background fabric and your cotton batting 8 inches square and then the fabric for the back, you're going to cut it 10 inches square. The type of applique that I'm going to do or the process is using light easy steam too and it's made by Pellon. And what it has is it has sheets of paper in there. And in between the two sheets of paper is a layer of glue. And that's what we use to put on the piece of the mason jar so that it will adhere to the background fabric. You can use any fusible webbing that you like. They pretty much all work the same. So when you're using it, just follow package instructions on the back. Use your grid lines if you like to draw your mason jar. So you want to highlight an area or draw lines that are approximately four inches by five inches. And that at each corner you're going to mark from the corner in and the corner down at three quarters of an inch from the corner. You'll do it on this corner and then the bottom two corners. Then draw a line to connect the two marks. To make the lid, you just draw an area on your fusible webbing sheet that's two and a half inches long by one inch wide. After you've drawn your two pieces, then you're going to cut it out, but don't cut on your drawn lines. Go out about a quarter of an inch all the way around and cut and do the same thing for the lid. Go out one quarter inch from the drawn lines and cut it out. To put it on your fabric now, you want to turn it over to the back, both of your pieces, and just take a straight pin and score the paper a little bit because it'll make it easier to get it off. And then bend it to get an edge to come up and then remove the paper on the back. Being careful that you don't remove the glue. It'll be tacky when you touch it. So this is the fabric for the lid. I'm going to turn it over to the back. So this is the back side, the not so pretty side. I'm going to take the sticky side here and place it face down on top and finger press it all around. Then when you, and you do this with both your pieces, the jar and the lid. Then using your scissors, go ahead and now you can cut right on the drawn lines and you do it on both pieces. Now here's how you place it on your background fabric. Now I've already put the jar portion, the lower portion down, but here's how you do it. You turn it over to where the paper is on the back of your fabric and score it again and bend it and let a piece pop up. And then you just go ahead and remove it, being careful that the glue doesn't come off with it. So it's nice and tacky. So you center everything down. Now I'm going to place this as close to the edge of the jar that I can. It might even overlap just a little bit. So if you don't get it all laid out correctly, you don't have it quite centered, you can still lift it up, remove it, and reapply it back down. Once you're happy with the way it is laid out, then you want to finger press everything down all over. After that, go to your ironing board and take a damp cloth, place it on top, and it's best if you have a steam iron and then hold your iron down on top. Read the instructions on the back of your package and it will tell you how many seconds you need to hold it down. 
Now here's one I've already got it fused on. And your next step would be to do an applique stitch that would cover the raw edges. So you might only just have a straight stitch on your machine. Not a good idea. You really need to have something, at least a zigzag stitch, to cover those edges. So if all you have is a zigzag stitch, shorten the length of your stitch so that the zig and the zags come together a little closer. If you have a computerized sewing machine, you probably have one or more of this type of stitching. These are applique stitches. So on the jar, the lower portion, I used this stitch. And then on the lid, I used this stitch. So before you do your stitches, you want to either take thin paper or tear away stabilizer and put it on the back. And then this is going to be your stitching order. First do the jar portion here. Do that. Then do the lid. And why I chose the lid or to do the lid last is because I wanted my satin stitch to slightly overlap on the jar. So then you would do that stitch next. When you're done, you just remove the paper off the back. After you do your applique stitches, you now want to layer everything together. This is my fabric for the back of the pot holder. The edges will roll around over on to the front side to cover the raw edges. So place the pretty side of the fabric for the back down. And then you're going to center your cotton batting, and I have two layers of cotton batting. You can also use one layer of cotton batting and one layer of Insulbrite if you prefer. You can buy Insulbrite at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts, Joanne.com, Amazon, Etsy, many sewing supply websites. So I've cut my two squares the same size as this, and this is an eight inch square. So the cotton batting is eight inches. Layer them all together and then center all of this on this back fabric. Now I recommend you pin everything together so because you want this fabric to stay in place. So the reason for pinning all of this the way I have is that I'm going to do a really basic quilting stitch. The quilting stitch means that you're going to stitch through all of the layers. There's four layers here. So in order for your fabric not to shift or separate from each other while you're stitching, I recommend that you use a walking presser foot. This will allow the fabric to feed through evenly underneath the fabric between the presser foot and the feed dogs. You can get these at sewing uh, machine supply websites where they sell parts. So the type of stitching that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a straight stitch. I'm going to go out about a quarter of an inch from the edge here and I'm just going to outline the shape of the mason jar. If you don't want to do that, you can stitch real close right along here. This helps to hold it all together. If you have done a lot of quilting stitches, you can use any pattern that you like. Some people like to stitch right over the applique. I prefer not to. So this is what mine looks like when it's done. It almost makes this look like it's lifting up out to give it more of a three-dimensional look. And if you're wondering what it looks like on the back, this is what it looks like. You can kind of see the outline. I used white thread, so it's really hard to see. Now on two opposite sides, you're going to fold the raw edge of the back fabric over about a quarter of an inch and then impress it. Then fold it over the top front of the pot holder and press it. I'm going to turn this 
this side is done, then you're going to stitch from this point all the way over to here. Now you're going to fold and press the last two edges, very similar to the way you did the other one. First take each corner and fold it in like this, okay? And you do that at both ends. Then fold the raw edge over about a quarter of an inch and press. Then fold it again and press. Then stitch from this corner all the way over to this corner. And this is what it should look like at this point. If you want to be able to hang the pot holder up, I'll show you how you can make a loop. Cut a piece of fabric that's about one and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches long. You can cut it longer if you like. So at each end, fold the edges over about a quarter of an inch and press it with your iron. Then after you've done each end, fold these edges in about a quarter of an inch and press. Then fold it in half like this and then press it and stitch all the way down. Take your uh, fabric for the loop and fold it in half and place it on the center back side up at the top edge. Place a couple of pins to hold it down and then stitch right across here a couple of times. And this is what it looks like when it's done. This is another version of the mason jar. This is not appliqued. It is actually a lot of different pieces of fabric stitched together. And if you're interested in making a mason jar inside of a little mini quilt block, there will be a link listed below your YouTube screen. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something new. I also hope that you try doing this pattern. It's really pretty basic for an applique piece. If you're interested in other applique projects, there will be links listed below your YouTube screen in the description section. You just scroll down, click on the words, show more, and it will expand open. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl. This is Manny. See you next time.